Yo, my people, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. And also, welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop podcast. My name is Jason. Thank you so, so much for stopping by. Uh, I have one friend this week. I know I've been like crowding in the people, but this week uh, uh, I have joined by a gentleman. He is from across the pond relative to where I am in Connecticut, uh, USA. Uh, this man is across the pond. He has a YouTube channel called Not Board Gaming. Uh, he is Mark Dainty. Welcome to the show, Mark. Jason, thank you for having me on the show. Really looking forward to, uh, to our chat here. And yes, I'm from way across the pond and we're on different time zones, but you know, we all enjoy the same love of board gaming. We make it work, baby. We make it work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here at like eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> like I just want to make up all night. I want to make sure I'm the only guest on this week. Is that because nobody else wanted to appear on the show because I'm here? Uh, is that the reason? <laughs> Hard to find people who have played the two games that we uh, okay. are talking about. I mean, you, you can. There's a couple of them out there, but uh, you know, t- yeah. people that are willing to come on and be like, okay, let's break it down. We're going to break it down. Uh, so we are going to talk about two big honking adventure games that have come out over the last year, right at the end of the year to kind of save yeah. 2020. <laughs> To, you know, like give us uh, something to think about because this year has been very, very difficult. Uh, But the two games we're going to talk about and compare and contrast, they're not that similar, but they're similar in the sense that they're big honking games. Yeah. uh, Full of adventure. We're talking about Author Quest, which is from the Sadler Brothers uh, from Blacklist Games and Etherfields, 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 something uh, from uh, Mikhail Orash and Awakened Realms. Yeah. So... um, you have covered both of these games in your channel, is that correct? I've done an unboxing so far for Alter Quest. I'm kind of savoring my time in it for the review. Uh, but I have come- yes. Let, yeah. it, let it simmer, <laughs> let it simmer, my friend. <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a good chili, let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, whereas uh, Etherfields, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've, covered, uh, I've done a fairly in-depth review of, of, of Etherfields so far mm-hmm. in my first kind of 18 hours in the game. So, I mean, these games aren't natural cousins. I think Alter Quest is more of a kind of dungeon crawly hack and slash. Uh, yeah. And Etherfield is more of an open adventure game. Yeah, yeah. But they're big and they're honking and they're full of minis. And I think like people see them both and they're wondering, which one should I buy? Yeah. So like, that's really what it comes down to. It's like, you know, answering that question. It's like, okay, I have some money uh, coming in for Christmas. Which one of these am I going to pick up? So we're going to uh, break that down. Uh, for you a little bit. We're going to kind of talk about like, you know, Etherfields, Etherfields and Al- Alter Quest and really blow it out. Uh, we yeah. got a lot of time. So, <laughs> and if you watch Mark's videos, oh you'll need God. it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to talk. Yeah. Speaking of, so before we get to that, let's get to some promo. Uh, so not board gaming, uh, go ahead and break down a little bit of what you would, what a, someone would expect when they subscribe to your channel. Okay. So not board gaming is a uh, YouTube channel based on solo and soloable board games and generally what I tend to do is go a little bit in depth. So my reviews tend to be long form. I know a lot of people like short and snappy five, 10, 15 minute reviews, and it's not unheard of for my reviews to be anywhere between 40 and 60 minutes. And generally what I'm doing is not just a review. The, the kind of final thoughts come at the back end of the video. So generally there's going to be a timestamp on there, or if not, if you kind of skip to kind of the final 10 or 15 minutes, you'll get to the you'll get to the final thoughts stage. But what I tend to do is show an overview of the game, how the game plays, uh, maybe do a round of the game, but just to give you an, intro- an, an idea of kind of the mechanisms involved in the game, because I think having that balance, it's okay kind of getting somebody's thoughts on how a game plays, but I think to have seen it in action first and then have the thoughts afterwards kind of marries up for some people. So it is long form reviews, absolutely. There are some smaller ones on there, my uh, not board gaming bite size stuff that I do, uh, which tends to be around about the 15, 20 minute mark. Um, and also kind of Kickstarter previews, unboxings, interviews, all that kind of thing as well. Cool. All right, so that is not board gaming. You are at Shelf Stories. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, uh, like this video. Um, and if you're on the One Stop Co-op Shop, go check out all the places uh, that we are present. Uh, we have a Discord channel, with, which you can uh, link to in the show notes. Uh, you can go visit our Discord channel. You can go to our Twitch channel, brand new, um, you know, uh, live streams and everything. Uh, and this channel, which is a sister channel, and I put the podcast version on the One Stop Co-op Shop. Please go ahead and subscribe to everything. <laughs> <laughs> But let us get into it. So we're going to break it down into four main categories uh, of comparison. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about just access. 
We're going to talk about rule set. We're going to talk about kind of this ease of entry into play, tutorial mission. Uh, how easy is it and how pleasurable is it to get into either game? Um, so let's start with Alter Quest, actually. I'll, I'll, okay. kind of, I'll go back and forth. So how does Alter Quest uh, present you in terms of rule book and easing you into the game? Ah, uh, it's, 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 for all the questions. I've got to say, it would probably have been the same sigh for Etherfields as well. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I, both of these have earned a sigh. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> That's our rating scale. Like how deep <laughs> is the sigh? <laughs> <laughs> And I think that Alter, Alter Quest does get one because it feels like the Saddlers, you know, and I, I love the Blacklist like game stuff. And, and as we talk about Alter Quest, you'll see that I do like the game without burying the lead too much there. Sure. But the rule book and the kind of implementation of getting people into Alter Quest, if you've never played a Saddler game or a modular deck system yes. game before, it's difficult because unfortunately, and it, it seems to be the, it's, it's becoming not a running theme, but it's becoming prevalent in the Blacklist games. Uh, games now that the rule books aren't their best. There are too many edge cases in the rule books. It doesn't take you far enough down the journey. It doesn't explain enough. There's, it needs an index at the back. Where is uh, the index? Where, where is, is the, the index? content? Give me yes. something. <laughs> comprehensive player aid, not just for the turn sequence, but for all the, or not yeah. all of them, but like for all for the key things that I need to know. I, ah. hey, don't give me, don't give me one card with some information on it. You know, and, and maybe right. rue the information that's missing on there. But I think. More so than, uh, not more so, but uh, what's becoming more and more apparent in all the Blacklist games is that it would really benefit from a full turn playthrough or at least two turn playthrough, just taking you, right, here's what you're going to do. Here's the cards you need. Here's your starter deck. Here's your characters you're going to choose. Here's the bad guys you're going to choose. And we can do this turn by turn to get you used to what happens because there are a lot of moving parts in Alter Quest. And it's, it feels initially overwhelming if you've never played uh, a Saddler game before or an MDS mm-hmm. game before. It feels overwhelming. Once you move into the flow of it, it moves you know, really quite smoothly and quite well. And, and, and fortunately... I should imagine, like yourself, Jason, I've played quite a few Blacklist games before. Sure. So coming Hold into Alter Quest... I have them. Quest, They're right there. They're right there. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Street Master's one of my all-time favorite games. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's still in my top five. Uh, Brook City, uh, yeah, it's, it's probably in my top 20 of games. Um, and I'm looking forward to the new one. So I love the Saddlers games. I love Blacklist games. I love the modular deck system. I don't love the rule book. Uh, and if you're coming into it for the first time, you haven't played it before, it's a challenge to get in there. Would you say the same thing? I would say, so actually, let's, we'll compare to Etherfields now, just to kind of oh, like okay. lay the land, right? So yeah. like Etherfields, uh, we, we side for both, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, Hold on. But, I'll, I'll, oh. <laughs> it's a deeper side for Etherfields for a different reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for different reasons. For different yeah. reasons. I think like, so I think the it, Alter Quest is hard to get into because the game is really complex. Like, it, it, okay, not really complex, but like there's a lot of, like every Sadler Brothers game, they 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 refuse to release a card with no text. Yeah. Every card, every element has some sort of text, has some sort of rule. Uh, I mean, you know, like the, uh, so like, I mean, when you go through the adventure, um, you, you have to kind of open up rooms, right? So like you're doing the hero quest thing, you're opening up rooms, you get a, a, a furniture piece. And then the furniture piece has rules. <laughs> and then the the monsters that come out, the monsters all act differently and act they don't act differently in like a general way. Each particular monster has rules. So then, I think like even like I because I mean it would much it was so helpful to have played the previous Blacklist games. Yeah. Um, even there though, I'm still looking in the rule book. Right. Yeah. I'm absolutely. I'm still looking in the yeah. rule book, and I'm still not. I'm still figuring out like little edge cases. Still figuring out the interaction of the altar dive. When can I change the altar dive? What's the order of operation? Yeah. When do things kind of like fire off and everything? God, you know, the errata is open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, uh, not well, the errata and the FAQs, all that stuff is like I'm. You know, I'm looking at Board Game Geek. Um, that's true for altar quests. I, I think that's a little bit of a, a rough patch there. Um, when we compare it to either field, so either fields, I feel like is a simpler rule set, but a higher barrier to get in. Yeah. Does that make, is that, is that fair? I would say that's, that's totally fair. And I think because um, Alter Quest feels almost intuitive once you start playing it, there's a very set sequence of events that you go through. It's sequential. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. And where with Etherfields, I think the, the issue being is that as, 
in Alter Quest, although it doesn't ease, necessarily ease you into the play, Etherfields kind of doesn't ease you in at all. It does have a tutorial, but to get through that tutorial, you have to have read a, a, a rule book first, which doesn't necessarily make sense unless you played the tutorial. Uh, so what you end up doing is using, reading a bit of the rule book, jumping into the tutorial, going back to the rule book, going back to the tutorial, and it does not flow. And unfortunately, and, and a lot of the, uh, the kind of discussion online is about the rule book, is it's not a great rule book in Etherfields. The information is all there, but it's all being jumbled up in this, this kind of horrible melange of things. And I think that the barrier to entry in Etherfields is greater than it is in, um, in Alter Quest because the game feels bigger. So therefore you feel like you need to know more before you go into the world of Etherfields. Mm -hmm. Although what I will say is, so Etherfields, I, I almost feel the exact opposite that you do in a sense of like, okay, there's that first set, there's that game setup thing. And then, like they, they, and then the campaign set up, and then you, they go into like the main rules. I almost want people to say, like, stop right there and play the tutorial without the rule book, because I think the rule book introduces a whole bunch of rules, and playing the tutorial is like, okay, where does this rule come up? Where does this rule come up? It's almost like you know too much, and you yeah. almost kind of want to go through the tutorial, and maybe this was the intended way of like, do the tutorial first and then read the rule book. Yeah, but pe players don't do that, and the rule book doesn't tell you to do that. Yeah. So that effect that you were talking about, rule book to game, rule book game, rule book game, it almost comes from the fact that I've read the rule book first, and I'm trying to fit in what I've learned. Okay, when can I roll yeah. luck dice, and when can I do this, and when can I do that? And doesn't give you, it doesn't give you enough of that, like um, like rampant. So like yeah. you know, like you go to a, a fantasy fight game. Uh, they have the, the learn to play. They're like, okay, yeah, absolutely. do not read the rest of the stuff. Yeah, move to the learn to play. And just kind of go from there. And I almost felt like the game wanted, should have done that in yeah. a way. Yeah. Not that, I'm, you know, not that I think that the learn to play model is the, the, the key, but like just for, if you're going to do a tutorial, yeah. if you're going to do a, okay, play the game first and here's 60% of the rules, go that direction. Don't just like, you know, kind of present it in a model, so to speak. Yeah. And I think I see how you get to the tutorial through reading the rule book. It's, it's kind of hidden away in one corner of it as well. Yeah. So you've got to go through the main mechanics as well in either fields to, to get to the tutorial. And I think you're absolutely right. It needed that separation. It needed you to maybe play a tutorial mission twice to understand the core mechanics before you get into the rule book. I love rule books. When I get a new game, one of my key things is to open the box, not even look at the components, get the rule book out and sit there for a couple of hours reading the rule book from mm -hmm. cover to cover. Oh my God. And I did that with Etherfields oh. and I, I kept stopping That's and starting so again terrible. and stopping and starting again and just thinking, you know, I, 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 I kind of digest Lacerda rule books for breakfast. You know, I, I read through those and I think I've got a pretty good idea on how that wow. game's going to go. Um, I'm going to have to but, call you up whenever I have a, a rule book difficulty, man. <laughs> I, that, that, that worst part of the game for me. I love oh. it. I absolutely adore it. But with Etherfields, it was just a chore to get through. And that's a real problem that I think for a lot of people, mm -hmm. once you get past it, me mechanisms, they're easy. They play absolutely fine. Uh, you will know what to do in the main and the game will add additional rules as you go on. And some of them you will mess up and some of them you will get right. But eventually, you know, you're playing the game that you want to there. And same with Alter Quest. But getting to that stage, getting to a stage of comfort, which should be the primary aim for any board game is getting you to a stage of comfort right. for your game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not about preventing you from playing the game. It's about easing you into that and giving you enough information to think I'm playing this comfortably and I know roughly what I'm doing. Right. Etherfields and Alter Quest both kind of miss the mark on that. Right. For, for, and I think for a slightly different reason, I hope we were able to break down kind of how they played out differently, but lead you to that same point of... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I so let's not. So um, let us get to something that's a little bit happier, mm -hmm. uh, which is the overall world, right? Yeah. So they both prevent very different worlds. So Etherfields is a dream world, right? Yeah. Uh, and Etherfields is is kind of inspired by gothic, ho gothic fa fairy tales, European kind of style, um, and you're doing these kind of disconnected dreams. Uh, yeah. And, you know, as you kind of moving through all the quest is more of that classic, you know, here are your standard classes. Here's your healer. Here's your paladin. Here's your rogue. Uh, and it's very, very kind of like generic. And is it, OK, actually, I say that word generic. Is that fair for all the quest? Uh, I think, yeah, and it's both its strength and its weakness at the same time. Um, because I think through having this kind of bog standard dungeon, if you like bog standard, it's not, uh, but a static map dungeon without any real backstory. Yes, there are the campaigns and blah, blah, but you know, you can play a it as a series of one shots. Um, 
it does one of two things. First of all, you have to build your own world around that. It doesn't spoon feed you the information. So if I'm picking, I don't know, a particular hero with particular bad guys uh, as a one shot campaign, I've got to make the story up for myself. Why is, you know, why is the, I don't know, right. uh, th- this particular character journeying through this dungeon to fight these bad guys. Whereas with Etherfields, it's, it's, it, it's real strong point is this kind of this, world building that it does this this constantly changing world building that it does for you a series of disconnected adventures admittedly but the world it builds for you in each adventure is very very strong so i would say kind of thematically wise in terms of uh, uh providing a unique theme then ether feels absolutely edges alter quest on that but that's not to say that the theme is lacking in alter quest you just got to go into it knowing what it is and what it is is <laughs> it's almost the epitome of dungeon crawling it is right. you're in a dungeon you're unearthing rooms you're fighting bad guys you're getting treasures you're getting to an objective and that's it and if you go into that knowing that you can create some of your own wonderful stories in that world mm-hmm. i think that classic fantasy is very comforting to people right yeah. so if you want if you're a person that wants to that's looking for that familiarity that comfort like you know like Terranoth, the the fantasy flight world uh you know i i am I am not moved by that world at all, but I yeah. know people that are like, Oh, I love seeking in tearing off so easy to remember. And I get to know the characters. Some of them recur from the, from the different games. You can kind of see the same shopkeeper and different. And it's, I'm like, I'm thinking about, so, this is tearing off. This is- <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> but so I think like, you know, uh, so it depends on your, your flavor in terms of like, you know, if you want that, that, that familiar, comfortable kind of thing with some wrinkles. I mean, they're like, I think Brady's a writer. Uh, yeah. And, you know, they, they have written lore for this thing and they aren't yeah. campaigns. Uh, so you can go into the, you know, the, the, like the, mo- the main module, the ruins of Arkham Spire, read through an actual adventure, do it six times. And like, you can have a, a romp. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. If you want more of, you know, let's take some risk taking. If you want some, like a, a totally different uh, feel. Uh, and I think, I think like, you know, and in this case, mechanism kind of matches up with, um, story in both areas. So like, you know, you get six adventures strung together and, the, and yeah. that's a very familiar art thing. He, in, in either fields, you get... <laughs> however many. <laughs> you get however many and, ha- and they, they occur randomly. So I feel like it just, it depends on what your flavor is, but they're, yeah. I think they both deliver well what they're trying to do. I agree. I agree. And I think, as I say, you've got to go into them both with a sense of knowing what you're going into. Don't go into ether fields expecting a really strong narrative like you got in Tainted Grail. It's a completely different environment. It's a different world. It operates in a different way. You've got this disconnection from one dream to another with a slightly kind of arching storyline, but many branching narratives. The the world within... Um, uh, uh, Alter Quest is, as you say, you know, you've got the main campaign in the main box and then the ruins of Ark and Spire, but they are set camp- set missions that you're playing in each campaign, if you like. Now, I suppose you could mix and match up the bad guys that you're putting in there. It doesn't really matter. Um, but again, go into it knowing that, that you know, it's, uh, you're going to create, there is a mild narrative that's been created in the campaign books in, in Alter Quest. It's, it is mild as well, the narrative. It really is just a linking storyline with, you know, it should give you an excuse to move from one to the next and add some cards or take some cards away. But again, go into that because sometimes we don't always need these huge, complex campaigns. You know, right. we don't always need to be knee-deep in a 50-hour campaign of, I don't know, of Gloomhaven or of Tainted Grail or of Etherfields. Sometimes, you know, with the Alter Quest, six games, it's probably, you know, over a couple of days, two or three days, you could do that campaign and have a cracking time doing it, mm-hmm. play it again another time and have a slightly different journey because of how you fare in each, in each, particular, uh, uh, each particular setup. So yeah, going there aware of, 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 right. of both the strengths of each and the, and the negatives of each one. To some people, this might be a grievous insult. Some people, this might sound great, but Alter Quest theme is almost like NCIS for fantasy. Or like some very familiar <laughs> CBS show that you just know you're going to get. And it says, how do you execute yeah. where you're going to get? Uh, <laughs> I there's NCIS nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that as well. <laughs> we need that kind of stuff in our life. Right. Yeah. So, And Etherfield is more going for like prestige ca- cable drama. So, <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Something, some high-end HBO stuff going on with Etherfields, basically. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something that may be, should have been cancelled after two seasons, though. Who knows? <laughs> Well, that goes on eight seasons, but like it has like his core viewership. And it's just yeah, like, yeah. That, that show's still on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ether 
long feels, did Tremaine last? Oh it <laughs> feels is is uh, is like lost the board game. Yeah, yes. right. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's still going on? Season what? Season yeah. six. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so let us get to a uh, player side. All okay. right. So I, I think people like we're t- we're talking like deck play. Yeah. We're talking card play. Yeah. You know? And and it's it's I think both games offer its version of kind of relatively complex, like involved card play like this isn't descent where you have like one board two upgrades and then like a bunch of dice like you you, uh, a lot of like both of these games in their own way trade on how like you know wanting you to be clever with your cards yeah right um so they do it differently so like ether fields is a deck builder ish thing we uh we talked about it in a a dice tower review but like it's not uh, calling it a deck builder is kind of a misnomer it's more of a a a deck evolving thing you get a couple of cards in and you kind of have to you know uh, do uh, uh, manage whatever small smaller increases of resources yeah uh and and the 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 upgrading happens over a much longer period of time yeah uh and it's much slower and you get like little powers on the side alter quest because it's so punchy uh, wants to okay you get your, your modular deck system your fixed deck which you know i'm a big fan of but as opposed to the previous blacklist games here you start with like ongoing cards ongoing cards your equipment cards yeah right away yeah right? and then you're playing your mostly one shots and like other things off of that um so alter quest let's go alter quest first because it starts off pretty complex I, if you haven't played a blacklist game before yeah. you're gonna look at this layout and go <laughs> I don't know if you had that experience. You played all. You played blacklist games before. Black. I almost like put myself in a, a brain space of somebody. Like if I, I'm like, thank God I've played a, a blacklist exactly. game before. Yeah. I mean, for me, you know, Alter Quest. If, if I separate Alter Quest from uh, Street uh, Street Masters, Street Masters, I only ever play one fighter. So I, I enjoy a solo, a true solo challenge. Excuse me. In Street Masters, I've not done true solo in Alter Quest. I played two characters, and so for therefore my my kind of card layout area is huge on my de- on my deck because I'm oh on my desk because so there are so many cards to put out. It's going around my game table, all you know, my cards, the buddy deck, and the the Alter deck, etc., all going around there. But what it does allow you to do is really start as you as your game progresses and your your kind of your play area gets a little bit stronger and you've got more cards out in there it allows you to string together some really really good combos and i can be you know towards the back end of a of a particular quest uh, because you get three main actions that you can do in alter quest and then there are you know each turn is a, is a main action and um uh, you can do a number of free actions so to speak in between kind of these lightning actions if you like by um uh, uh, by stringing certain cards together so you know if you tip it one way or you you do a particular thing it adds it adds a dice to your roll by the towards the back end of my game in alter quest i can string together some really really good sure. combos depending on what cards i've got there and i really like that idea as i'm first going to the dungeon i'm kind of eh, not weak you know my character has its own inherent strengths and its own items but um but yeah not at full potential by the back end of the game so the kind of the final quarter of the game i've got a good play area of cards where i can really start to work these combos together and that comes from a knowledge of the game it mm-hmm. comes from a knowledge of uh, the other decks that you've got and kind of strategizing your play in terms of the baddies, what they're going to do in the, the alter deck, what, what that's going to do, but also from a knowledge of how the MDS system works as well. So the more you play it, the more you become adept at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Field, not so much, I don't think. So Ether Fields is, um, <clears throat> so it's an exploration game, so it shouldn't be as complex. Right. Yeah, I think like in a Rock'em Sock'em game like Alter Quest, you want that combo liciousness. You want like, you know, the I move 17 spaces this turn and I kind of shoot off three arrows and, you know, I, I take a, you want that kind of like, you know, that Nova yeah. end. Uh, so either of you is going to be, it's, it's going to be much more stripped down experience where you have your, your deck and you like I said before, your deck doesn't grow very far and the cards don't really combo. No, you know, like most of the time you're going to be using the cards for their resource and like, okay, I have cards and then it's like, you know, whatever the bottom says, I want to do the bottom, but like, I need the resources. Yeah. (laughs) And so it's like, it's, it's much more about like, okay, the cards are almost like a delivery system for you to get into the adventure. Yeah. And they don't want to distract from that. Exactly, and I think that's what they are. Is they are a they're a progression mechanism. That's 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 exactly what they are. So you use the cards to in ether fields to move to uh, do contact or do um, uh, assault, basically, or combat, should I say? And that's it. So you're either moving, you're 
looking at new stuff or you're, you're attacking somebody. There is the progress cards that you can pull out of your deck and put below your player board as well um, in either fields, which does give you then that element of t- slight comboing, if you like. Yeah, So I can you know, use this card to move extra spaces or add additional hits or move diagonally or what have you. Uh, but yeah, um, they are very much... Uh, yeah, they, they operate in a very, very different way. Mm-hmm. I think the thing with potentially with um, uh, ether fields is the other stuff that you can potentially add to your cards. So as you get more items, you can use the items uh, in ether fields. There are certain cards that are only, you, if you get them, you can only use them on certain dreams at certain times as well. So it's understanding how the decks interplay in ether fields. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's kind of the key thing. Whereas in Alter Quest, you're understanding you know, your main bit of that comboing your particular deck, and then you'll move on to the bad guys deck, or you'll move on to the altar quest, uh, the altar right. deck. Yeah. Whereas so that's, um, that's interesting, yeah. interesting that you mentioned that. I did, I did want to mention that as well, that like, so, I mean, the two different games are trying to do different things. The only reason we're reviewing together is because they came out at the same time and people yeah. are asking, <laughs> which one should I buy? Uh, so it's a little bit apples and oranges, but whatever, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Um, in Alter Quest, do you find that you are spending too like not too much but do you spend a majority of your brain space in your player area like it's you know you see what i'm saying it's like you know like either fields wants you to spend the majority of your brain space on the board yeah and like looking at the things and not and in the the, the storybook uh alter quest want does want to it doesn't want you to ignore the board it does it want like it, it wants you to pay attention to the authors and the, the geometry of the board and everything but yeah. I, I feel like so much of the game occurs in your player area and just executing and loading the gun and firing it and whatever, uh, that like maybe, is, that, is it too much, so to speak? Um, maybe. I think it, it pulls a, not a master stroke, but it pulls a good stroke in the fact that at the end of your turn, before you move on to the other decks, you draw the next card out for your hand that you can then use on your next turn. So you can start planning you know, uh, by having this full hand of four or five cards, whatever it is, at the end of your turn, when you draw back up to your hand size, uh, you've still got the, the creature deck, the, the, the enemy deck, and the altar deck to go through. And you can start at least planning for that, that new card that you've just drawn out, or those new cards that you've just drawn out, how you're going to interplay, depending on what happens on there. But so, yeah, I think it, it potentially does. A lot of it does take down, down there. The, the board is, it is necessary, absolutely is necessary, not just for flavor, but your progress, etc. that's on there. Uh, but you're not, with ether fields, you are you go into a particular place on the board. Maybe it's got an icon on there to uncover some text in the in the in the kind of secret scripts book. So you're right, you're very much focused on that. In Alter Quest, if I'm moving towards a bad guy or moving towards a particular feature in a room, then absolutely right, it's coming on the back of what I've got in my hand. Is it right time for me to be moving on that board based on what I've got in my play area? Based on say, what yeah. I got in my play area. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you I, I don't think it's anything. too much. I've, you don't do anything in Alter Quest without consulting your play area. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, my, I don't do anything in life without being cons- uh, consulting my wife. <laughs> the play area is my wife, basically. So <laughs> She determines what I can do and when I can do it. <laughs> absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> you met her. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I mean, again, two different experiences, and it's a question of which one you prefer. Yeah, um, there so, isn't a right and wrong way of, of doing it, I don't think, right. and, and both of them are very good strengths in both games. I think you know, um, I, I, I think it's, it's important to do that uh, to kind of clarify that is that playing in your play area in Alter Quest is not a bad thing. It's just a different way of playing the game, basically. Whereas with Ether Fields, as you say, it's very much on the board. Yep. All right. Uh, so then, let us go to. What, what people th- consider to be the, uh, uh, the main show, which is kind of the board mechanisms and, you know, how you actually accomplish adventures on a mechanical level and yeah. success and failure and victory and all that kind of thing. Um, so again, you know, these are, diff- these are, they're trying to accomplish two different things. Uh, Alter Quest is Brockham Sockham. I mean, you can definitely see, uh, uh, have you played a lot of the Lord, Lord of the Rings uh, card game? Uh, not the card game, no. I played card Journeys game. in Middle Earth, but not the card game. Okay. Yep. Uh, so the, you can, I mean, Journeys in Middle Earth is kind of the same way. Like it, it definitely, in the sense of like there's a, a, a push to not spend too much time. Yeah. Like if you're, if you, like the, every round has to be some sort of progress towards something. And if it isn't yeah. like movement progress, at least you're gearing up. Like the, you don't have a lot of time to dilly dally in a game of Alter Quest. Like, you know, because you have your, generally like kind of 10 card enemy turn and then once the 10 card uh enemy turn is done then you got the big guy and that's big bad's out there yeah 
uh, or like the like some of the missions in Alter Quest will are like okay, like an escort quest or something will happen where it's like okay, you have to this has to happen. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, like the Lord of the Rings games uh, tended to use that at least like a threat meter. Yeah, so it's like a, a random number on the top, which I never liked. I never liked just having like, okay, you are now seventy five, and you know this is the the build rex that way. The, it's the Alter Quest hides it a little better, but it still okay. definitely has gives you that push. You must finish this. Yeah. Um. Although I will say, Etherfields kind of does the same thing because the turn deck is limited too. Yeah, absolutely. So both yeah. ways, the game is pushing you towards something. So they're not true. You can't just kind of like meander and explore. Yeah. Do so at your own peril, so to speak. Is that is that I fair? Think, yeah, I would say so. And I think you know most good games to keep it tight to stop it from uh, being too too sprawling and, and and losing focus. There has to be a timer mechanism. Is it uh, too tight? Is it too much? Well, I think uh, in Alter Quest there are some challenging missions. Absolutely, uh, I don't mind it so much. I think. The downside from that is there's no end game. There's no big end game in Alter Quest. You kind of just finish a mission and that's it. And that's the problem with having a timer rather than having, say, a set, right, you're going to, you know, mm-hmm. you're absolutely going to battle, you know, the big bad at the end of this game. You can absolutely, and I've done it on many of my Alter Quest missions, get through the mission and not uh, activate the big bad. So the game just ends. And that is a little bit of a thing I'm working on a timer. Well, the same happens when you hit the, hit the stairs, basically. Hit the stairs, basically. You've done your objective and you go back to the stairs and then that's it. And you can do that without activating the big bad. Um, Etherfields, there is the turn deck. So every time you finish and uh, uh, every time you t- you finish a, uh, uh, the a AI's turn, if you like, or in between your turn, the, the, the bad guys do something and then you, you get another card and there's only so many cards per, per round. At the end of that, there is a slight there's the there's the ability for ether fields to change what happens when you get to the end of the turn deck so it will say if you run out of cards and go to this particular script here and it may be the end of that particular dream and you've got to revisit it or it may give you a branching narrative that's kind of cool there but yeah uh i think both of them still miss kind of um the big end to a particular mission at the same time. And I really like that in a game. And that for me for Brook City was one of the, the kind of overarching things, you know, it's got this really good kind of eighties buddy cop feel in Brook City, but at the end of any eighties buddy cop, there was a big show off with the bad guy. And that's right. what was missing from Brook City, slightly missing from Alter Quest, although it can be triggered with a big bad coming on the board and in some dreams in ether fields, it's the same thing. So if you don't mind a game on a timer mechanism, that's fine. But they could they could have a stronger end game for both 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 titles. It's almost a trade off, right? Like if either you have that timer mechanism, which is kind of like encouraging the push, and they both want to do it for different ways. Like Etherfields yeah. wants you to wants you to get through dreams so that you can get through more dreams. Yeah. There's a lot of them in there. <laughs> so it's like yeah. I don't know, there's a lot of dreams in there. So like they really want you to go dream, dream, dream. You know, over the course of multiple plays, but they don't want you to like have that culminating experience because they take time. Yeah, because you, know, you have to build up to it. You have to go gear up for it. You have to, you know, like uh, maybe you have to do some scouting missions or get to know it or whatever it is. And that all takes time. So Etherfield is trying to get you from one dream to the other. Alter Quest, I know like Brady and Adam, they don't, they don't like these big campaign games. Yeah. You know, like they weren't huge fans of Gloomhaven. I had them on my show. They, we ranked top 10 fantasy games. Gloomhaven did not make their list <laughs> because it's too big and too long and yeah. other things. Um, so they want, they, so they like games that are kind of punchy and it's like, okay, six missions and out and you're, you're good. That's it. Yeah. Um, is it, are they missing something? Is it, is it like, did you, like you said before, like, you know, did you, were you missing, were you craving that experience of kind of taking down a big bad, you know? Uh, and, and, and this is it. I suppose you've got to be careful what you wish for is at the end of the day, uh, Alter Quest is dungeon crawling in almost its purest form. Uh, and therefore, if I don't get the big bad experience, that's also coming to the fact that it's stripped out a lot of other extraneous stuff. So I'm kind of with Brady and Adam on Gloomhaven. It's not one of my favorite games. I've, I've got it. I've got Jaws of the Lion. And I play it a few scenarios and I get inherently bored by the end of two or three scenarios. It's like I've lost interest now, you know, card play, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, 
Alter Quest strips out a lot of that extraneous narrative and gives you almost a video game in a board game form. So therefore, if it doesn't have the big bad or necessarily have the big bad in every mission, it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, no game is perfect. And if you're looking for a wish list, then yeah, I would still like a big end game in each one uh, at the end of each mission. But if it's not there, that's okay. Because ultimately, every game of Alter Quest that I've had, and whether that's I've died in the second room or I got to the end of the mission, have had an absolute blast playing through that kind of that 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 uh, that particular mission so yeah in an ideal world i'd like the opportunity to have a big bad it's not the end of the world for me though okay uh also another thing that both games do again in different ways but they do both do this is the sense of discovery yeah so um alter quest it comes in the form of you open up a room and you get the 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 altar piece you know yeah. like you get a bookshelf or you get a i don't know garbage heap i mean there's all sorts of like yeah, different also, random yeah. things yeah and then in ether fields you can get anything yeah. <laughs> you, you know you can get you know uh, a room full of like things to explore you can get a room full of clues to discover for something yeah. you can get a big bag or you can get nothing you can get a big empty room uh, uh and and you kind of like okay you're you're like am i missing something so like it really puts you in that kind of like you know wondering headspace like wh- uh, and it's like wow anything could happen where alter quest you kind of know what you're getting yeah you know you're going to get a, a room piece. You know you're going to yeah. get, and, and that room piece is going to have a rule attached to it, which, come on, guys. <laughs> not every, not every uh, furniture piece needs, like, its own rule. Yeah. Um, and then its own other, like, card, like, okay, attach this one to the rule set or anything like that. But anyway, we can talk about that later. So <laughs> how did you feel, like, the both games, uh, like, delivered that sense of discovery? So I think, um, I'll talk about AlterQuest first. There, is a, there are a finite number of features that you're going to uncover. And depending on whether you've just got the base game or you've got the stretch goals and the runes of Arkenspire, um, you will then get the opportunity to, have, to add more into there. So it may not just be a bookcase that you get in kind of in every adventure. It may be, I don't know, a cage or something along those lines. So the right. more that you have, the more that you can uncover. But Ultimately, it's always going to be the same feature that you uncover in, you know, within a, 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 the same sets of features that you're going to uncover there. And you're right, those cards that you then attach to it that come from your quest deck, they give it a slightly different spin. But it's still, it's right. repeating the same thing over and over again. Whereas with ether fields, because there are no real physical assets like that, the only physical assets are the, 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 the minis, if you like, and even those can be, the, well, the proxy, even if you've got the minis, you proxy some minis for, for other things in the game as well. Ether fields, that sense of, wow, what am I going to uncover in, in this stream is stronger than it is in Alter Quest, absolutely. The sense of not knowing is absolutely stronger, you know, mm-hmm. very, very strong in ether fields. Not, again, we go back to it, not every time it's successful. Uh, sometimes you're led on a bit of a, a kind of a, a red herring towards a particular dead end, and you think, oh, God, I've got to play that dream again. Uh, but sometimes you, you get something, you think, God, that's really very cool, like a new mask, or, or maybe you, you, there's a, a pack of cards that you haven't been able, allowed to open yet, and you get to open oh, a new pack of cards. Oh, that deck of cards is. Yeah. I saw it when I opened it. I finally got it. Got it, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so you get a deck of cards, or, or you get, uh, if you unlock the signs on there, you know, you're looking for these little tokens which have uh, uh, artwork assets on there that if you find them, you get to read something else in the script. So the sense of kind of unknown and exploration in Etherfields is far greater than it is in Alter Quest, it, but it's done in a very different way in Alter Quest. I don't sure. think Alter Quest needed that extra complexity. I think you need to go into Alter Quest n- knowing roughly how the game plays each particular, as you say, there's so many rule sets that can be introduced into Alter Quest. Yeah. It's nice to have that kind of, that commonality going through everything. What I will say though, is having played them kind of like close to each other. Yeah. And, you know, having, I, I, I played Alter Quest first because I, I got it first. Uh, and it was, it was so exciting. Like, you know, every room is something and, you know, like I'm, I'm comboing things with the cars and everything. And then I got to Etherfield and like the one thing it made me want to kind of, you know, go back into all the quests and say, why does every room have to have a thing? Like I would, I, it, would it be the worst thing in the world to kind of like go into a room and there's not a thing? Yeah. <laughs> Just for pacing sake. Yeah. You yeah. know, so like I, so I, I'm like going through a game of ether feels like you go, you go through that, you get that empty card or whatever it is, and like you, your, your brain almost kind of sets, and you got kind of let the natural yeah. tension rise. What's going to happen in the next card? The next card must be, you know, something good. And then, but Alter Quest, uh, it's it's always high. It's almost like a, like a rock song that yeah. never has a that like with no 
like lull in it. It's like, yeah, okay, you yeah. know, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, and then we're good. And it's like, you know, three minutes of like, and I blow my, and I blow my head. Yeah. Where Etherfield is much more like, like a, I don't know, like a long prog rock song. Where it is, it goes up and movements yeah. and everything. And I, I, it kind of made me wish on the, maybe because I'm, I'm, I, I tend to favor exploration and I tend to favor yeah. and stuff. It made me wish Alter Quest kind of like was more willing to kind of put in movements and take a breath a little bit rather than just kind of hit me with stuff all the time. Yeah. I think that would have been nice that too, um, t- to still have a relative amount of unknown. And I think again, uh, it's not, it's not a bad thing. If you accept it, alter quest is potentially more procedural than ether fields is you, yeah. you know, you're, you're going to move, you're going to open a door, you're going to reveal the art, the, whatever the, the, the feature in the room, you're going to draw a couple of bad guys cards. Uh, and then you're going to enter the room and you're going to fight them and do whatever. And that's going to happen every single room that you enter more or less, basically. So it is more procedural whereas ether fields is, yeah. Okay. This might be open this door, but Hey, it's not actually a door. What it is, is a portal to the back of your brain and whatever it gives you these kind of um this kind of uh, weird kind of you never know what you're really going to uncover in field. so the sense of exploration is great you're right and i really like that analogy the the, uh, the kind of rock song analogy it is and i suppose given the given the saddler's kind of rock background as well right. you can understand it there is it is just that kind of thumping thrash narrative mm-hmm. going all the way through you enter alter quest and your pace doesn't doesn't uh, falter at all it never lets you even when yeah. you're not moving you're still playing card and you're still yeah. probably doing some damage like and then the moving happens and it's just like this it's yeah. like constant stuff happening but i think that on the flip side of that i never feel like i'm stuck for something to do in alter quest whereas within ether fields mm. i can think oh, okay mm. uh, well i haven't got enough I don't know, movement cards to do anything i'm not near anything Therefore, I've got to end my turn early. Whereas in Alter Quest, there's always something to do. There's always something I can interact with and, and, and a way to actually feel like I'm making progress. And whereas in Etherfields, because of how the card interplay works differently, there are situations where you just think, I've just got to wait for the next turn and see what happens. Right. Although I kind of appreciate that in Etherfields because it's not like you don't play the cards. Like, it's not like you discard them right so like you can hold on to two cards draw your four and i have the, uh, the i have a special power up where like i had an increased hand size so almost like the game is asking me to take a breath don't do too much here yeah. draw more cards and then like you know so like it, like again a, a sense of movement yeah you no know, it, 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 i don't like you know the, the the waste of turn quote unquote does pay off in like a better turn later where in alter quest i feel this pressure to yeah. maximize every single turn. And I'm not saying it's as a, as a bad thing, right? I'm just saying like, okay, just to map out the different experiences. Yeah, What absolutely. people prefer. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, yeah. So then, so we can get to, uh, okay, before I get to the kind of overall stuff, is there any particular aspect of either game that you think we should cover and to talk about? Uh, you know, I think with all, the, uh, sorry, with Etherfields, I think the, one of the, key things and we touched on it in the in the review and maybe earlier is it's potentially a game that is too big uh, for itself uh, and I think that is potentially um, it's it's a fault that I'm seeing more and a fault it's a, an issue that I'm seeing more and more with Awakened Realm stuff so I know it was something that was sending Tainted Grail it's certainly for uh, Etherfields and it's my worry about ISS Vanguard that's coming up as well mm-hmm. I think Awakened Realms need to learn that less is more um, you know, don't give me an additional 30 hours of gameplay. Get the 30 hours that you've given me right first before mm-hmm. you give it to me. Um, whereas with Alter Quest, uh, I think that I love Alter Quest, I think it's great. I'd like to see the Saddlers do something slightly different now than it's, the MDS. Yeah, they, they, yeah. They've said yeah. That. they have yeah. said that. They have said, like, okay, especially Adam. Uh, Brady could yeah. design MDS games the yeah. whole time, but Adam is like, can we not design an MDS game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you know Alter Quest is is is, is not hamstrung, it's, uh, but it's also a again a victim of the blacklist success in the fact that it is an iteration of a similar system that you've played before. It's not the same game, but it's an iteration. So yeah, they both have their own kind of um, uh, the reasons that their production holds them back, if you like. Um, with Alter Quest, it's, uh, sorry, with Etherfields, it's just too big, and with Alter Quest, maybe slightly too big. Uh, at the moment, or maybe not big enough for some people as well, but it still kind of fits within a familiar mold there. 
Yeah, I don't. I I I wouldn't say Alter Quest is too big. I I like you know because you you want different features. Like you do want more features in order to yeah. vary up your gameplay. You must get an expansion for Alter Quest I, in order to I, vary up that game. Absolutely. Play. Problem yeah. is, I I got everything for Alter Quest, and I've got <laughs> struggling to find the shelf space for it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the, <laughs> there are so many minis. Yeah. So <laughs> and all the, all these people that are painting all the minis all the time oh in Alter God. Quest. I have no idea how somebody can go through a full set of Alter Quest and Etherfields, for that matter, if you've got the creatures sure. of Etherfields and, and paint everything. There are just so many minis, yeah. That's a really great point. Uh, I didn't think of it that way, but like, you know, Awaken Realms and Blacklist do not have large catalogs. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, and they release one or two games a year. Yeah. And, and they're all big. So it's like both Etherfields in the Awaken Realms sense and Alter Quest in the Blacklist sense are kind of like, how it's almost like taking the temperature of how this company is doing, how they approach games. Are they learning lessons from previous games and implementing them later? So, th- th- so this, this kind of, this kind of ease into final thought because it kind of comes up with it. So like alter quest, I really do feel like does learn lessons from the previous games. It, it is, there's a lot to track in alter quest. And I think that people are going to, some people might find it too crunchy and complicated, uh, convoluted is, is yeah. a word that I've heard when it comes to Alter Quest. It can be convoluted. However, I feel like the I, I knowing the mind of the MDS game, uh, I can track what's going on a lot easier. Yeah. Relative to Street Mash, Street Mash is I felt like there was just too many cards, but there's new cards every turn. Uh, and Alter Quest, the cards end like you the vi- the villain decks end, and you know you stop discovering new rooms, so like the new cards kind of slow down. Yeah, and which is a lesson they learned over Brook City and Street Masters, where it's like just cards all of throughout the end game. So yeah. good. Uh, so that's that was that was a really good kind of like evolution of their of their thing with Etherfields building on the Wiccan Realms thing. Did they learn that people had a problem with Tainted Grail because of the grind aspect of it, and did they just give you more grind? <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, they replaced the grind, I think, in Etherfield. They changed the grind, but they didn't yeah. really solve the grind issue. No, I mean, they, they gamified the grind, if anything, on, on by, uh, by creating the whole slumber phase in, uh, in Etherfield. So it's it, so the whereas, slumber and the dream work, the dream, yeah. dream works, dream realm. It's dream the, world, the, dreamscape, it's I don't know. It's one it's, of them. Yeah. The town, the, the, the 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 town not, phase. The not main dream phase, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, whereas obviously in Tentagrail, you, in Tentagrail, you've got to get the food, you've got to feed yourself, you've got to keep the men here as lit between this certain thing, uh, between, you know, for certain uh, distances. And that overtook the game. And what they've done in Etherfields is create the grind as a separate part of the game. They're giving you this town phase or slumber phase, but it's still a grind. Looping that map is still a grind. You know, churning through that slumber deck is still a grind. Ether, I think, again... I understand why it's there in these fields. Um, I just wish Awaken Realms would have done it in a different way and, and, and not lost the impetus of what you're getting in those dream in, in the full dreams, if you like. Yeah. So yeah, they're learning. They haven't learned in terms of um, in terms of bloat. I don't think in uh, Awaken Realms. Um, we touched on it already, but less should be definitely more for mm-hmm. them. Uh, and in Alter Quest, uh, Blacklist haven't learned in terms of the rule book. Um, it, it's, yeah. It's, okay. The it, rule book it, is still, uh, still. It's the overriding still, thing. Right. Yeah, I think you know if you look on online at the various discussions online for both games, the rule book. Uh, or, and, and as a barrier to entry for both of them, it's quite high in the list of, of, of many people's kind of um, not grievances, but kind of people's downs uh, downs on these particular titles. If both companies had gone to I don't know, uh, you know, an external rule book or something like Paul Grogan and, and used his talents or, or or just done something slightly differently, then people would have less to complain about for both games. Right. I mean, when it comes to rule books, it's not just about is it information because the information's all there. It's is it packaged in a way? Yeah. Is it um, intuitive? Does it get players over that barrier and into these games? And you know, yeah. they're in different ways, we can kind of question both of them. But uh, well, let, let's just wrap up to our uh, final thoughts now. I think that we're ready. Um, mm. I think that. I think that we both enjoyed Alter Quest for what it is a little bit more than what Etherfields is for what it is. Is that fair? I would say absolutely. So I, I kind of received three games within very quick succession, uh, Etherfields, Alter Quest, and Dwellings of Eldervale. Mm. Um, 
uh, and out of the three, Dwellings of Elderbeer, oh, sorry, uh, Etherfield, sorry, is, is probably at the, my least favourite of those three. It's not to say it's a bad game. It's a game with some deep flaws which prevent me liking the game too much. Whereas with Alter Quest, it's a blast. It is a... It's a blast. It's a blast. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a game I set up. I know what, what's going to happen. I'm, I'm going on this journey on this this dynamic static map, if that makes sense, because it obviously it is static, but it changes each game. But I know what I'm, I'm going to experience there. It is an arcade game, if you like, Alter Quest. And I, I'm, I really enjoy it for that. Mm-hmm. Um, Etherfield just falters in too many ways for me to actually thoroughly enjoy the experience. Mm-hmm. Etherfield is the kind of game that I tend to like more. I tend to like more exploration games. I'm a role player at heart. I'm a D&D player at heart. So I like... Uh, different themes. I like different like things that happen. So in terms of like I like when Etherfields is good. I've had more fun, like more of a pure just wow yeah. experience in Etherfields. A because of the type of game I am, and B because it does some things really well when when the dreams are really humming. There's a lot of extra stuff kudzu around the main experience that kind of like diminishes it. Etherfields for me. Alter Quest is a romp. Yeah. And it is a convoluted romp. Yeah. Does it need to have four decks? And does it, does it need to have the altar dice? And does it need to have all these different interactions? Um, that is how the Saddlers accomplish that combo, combo, combo you were talking about. Yeah. Which, yeah. Is, which is the main show. So yeah. it's, I, it's probably hard to accomplish combo, combo, combo without all that complication. Uh, so I think it does pay off. But I, but I just wanted to f- uh, highlight for people that it's, Alter Quest is not without its issue. Absolutely, yeah. But its issue pays off where Etherfield's issue kind of like blankets over yeah. what could be the awesome experience. So at the end of the day, I think like, you know, if I'm going to you know, buy one, it, it'll probably be Alter Quest. Like just, to, just you know, if I, if I have like $100 plus in my hand, I'm like, what am I going to spend this on? It's Christmas 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is oh my god my hand is on fire i gotta spend it now <laughs> yeah let's it's face probably it. It, it, it 10 times out of 10 probably alter quest uh but i i, I enjoyed etherfield but alter quest is like i i rated them one two in my top 10 co-ops uh, which people have seen at this point right um and i think if i had played more of etherfield etherfield probably would have landed a little bit further down okay uh, i mean like i'm on like my five six range for the top 10 alter quest would still be number one Okay. Uh, Alter Quest, like you said before, arcade romp. Yeah. And lessons learned over the previous Blacklight themes. And I love Brook City just because the theme's awesome. Yeah. But I will play Alter Quest over, over anything they've released so far. Yeah. And uh, for me, Alter Quest doesn't quite top so far. It doesn't quite top Street Masters. And I know some people have issues with Street Masters. Um, I, I still love Street Masters. It just gives me that pure arcade feel. Yeah, the punch. Uh, it's, it's punchier. It's, it's yeah. like you go pow, pow, pow. You can like, you know, take out many, many people. Where in Alter Quest, it's a combination of how far did you move? How much did you position? Yeah. To be able to accomplish the quest. In, in Street Masters, there is no quest. It's just no. It's just <laughs> one shot camp, one shot stories, and that's great. And I love right. that. But out of the two of these games, uh, Alter Quest will. Uh, so my list is generally top ten solo games I played in a year, rather than just top ten uh, right. releases of a year. Um, uh, Alter Quest will be in my top ten. Ether Fields would possibly struggle to be in my top twenty. Right. Um, it won't be in my top ten. The, the the kind of the hindsight on ether fields and i suppose this goes back to this buyer uh you know you got your hundred dollars in your hand uh which game would i buy we're both you know fortunate unfortunate whichever way you want it we've already invested the cash we yeah. bought both games so hindsight is absolutely great i will say that um ether fields will absolutely absolutely work for a lot of people and i've seen on forums some people absolutely love it you know if you if you don't mind that slumber phase then and and if you think the core concepts of ether fields and watch don't just watch one review watch many reviews well, and yeah, many playthroughs because yeah. mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of different differing views out there if you think you're going to enjoy those core concepts you're going to get a lot of gain for your money and a long experience there which is great absolutely great but for me alter quest takes it uh, by a country mile Mm-hmm. It doesn't throw away quite as much as what Etherfields does. Etherfields promise so much and doesn't quite deliver on so many cylinders. Whereas I think going into Alter Quest, if you know enough about Alter Quest, it's pretty much the game that you think it's going to be, and that's great. It's just a blast. So yeah, I I, I prefer Alter Quest over Etherfields. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so that is our comparison episode. Uh, big honking games, big adventure games. Uh, Mark, thank you so much. Uh, Not Board Gaming is the YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and check that channel out. Uh, it's been it's a couple of years old at this point, right? Yep, two about two uh, about eighteen months old now. The channel, yeah, yeah. Yep, and we're and it is just kind of growing and growing. The subscription count is up. The views are going up. Uh, more and more notoriety, and we're you know, uh, this is a the, we're we're a big solo family over here. Uh, you guys remember when I did Every Night's Game Night? I had a lot of solo content creators. Some of them who are not creating anymore. Uh, because that's just kind of the natural cycle of things. But as people come in, they are welcome on my show. They're welcome on the new show. So, Mark, we will not be strange. We'll definitely hook up in the new year. I'm really looking forward to that, Jason. Thank you very much for having me uh, on this and on the Etherfields Review as well. It's made my Saturday, you know, what we are, uh, 10 days before Christmas now, just yes. a little bit more before Christmas, mm-hmm. yeah. As yeah, we thrilling. record, we're about 10 days before Christmas. As we release, we'll be around Christmas. So we want to wish everybody out there happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever holiday you celebrate around this time. Uh, whatever money you get, <laughs> please t- uh, tune in to us to, for our thoughts on how you should spend. <laughs> Wisely. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Jason reminding you if you can change your mind you can change the world so until next time later everybody bye <laughs>